So I have been provided with. Uh, uh, when you see, want me to stop, I will stop. But I'm just trying uh, to show you real images of uh, post contrast CT abdomen, axial mm -hmm. and coronal and sagittal images. Uh, yes. Uh, um, let me focus a little bit. I'm just putting up all the images for you there. Okay, so the uh, given images shows some uh, bubble wall thickening. Yes. And uh, some minimal uh, free fluid uh, mm -hmm. in the abdominal cavity. Exactly. And uh, which of the bubble is thickened? What is this? Uh, this is the transverse colon and uh, uh, splenic and part of some descending colon also. See. Yes, this, uh, yes, on the left hemi abdomen, yes. Yeah. The, uh, most of the part is uh, of large bowel. Yeah. And uh, however, no uh, dilutation of the bowel is noted and no uh, free air is yeah. seen. And uh, what about ischemia? Do you see ischemia? Like I said uh, to you, the ischemia always. There's no ischemia. of... Uh, yeah, uh, but there's no ischemia, you agree, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, some, uh, 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 thickening of the yes, the, uh, descending colon. Yeah. On this uh, coronal image. Uh, you're talking about this? Uh, yes, this on the descending the, colon. The descending colon. Is uh, the this whole is transverse? This is transverse, and then it's going like this, and then this is the descending colon. So it finishes at the splenic flexure, but mainly involving the transverse colon and splenic flexure, right? So then, what is this? What part mm -hmm. of the bowel is this? <clears throat> uh. And we are focusing on uh, it's this is the abdomen. genome, right? Then which which specific segment you are asking about? This one. Uh, is it abnormal? Uh, first of all, do you think it's abnormal? This is another small uh, segment, right? Um, this one is ileum. The in the left, uh, in yeah. the right, was, I guess, this is ileum. So this is genome. Yeah, this is. Do you think it's abnormal? Uh, yeah, ma'am, it's also thick walled and uh, the lumen. I, uh, oh. It is thick walled, it is enhancing, there is no ischemia, there is no nematosis, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, we, I, on this, you identified two abnormalities for me. You said a segment of the jejunum, and then we have it the transverse colon that is really abnormal, but we don't see ischemia, right? Yes, There's a third abnormality on these images. Uh, I have that here for you. So, do you see it? What about this image? Uh, the last one, exile? Yeah, this image. Ma'am, it's the... Uh, let me focus on the free air in the interior. Uh, uh, there's no free air in this patient. I would have shown, I would have... Uh, scroll down, please. Uh, one, one more time. The axial images. Yes. I'm a bit slow. Uh, You you are just a bit, you know, when you're uh, taking up cases, you tend to look more centrally and you don't look at the sides of the film, which is very normal and natural. So there's a big abnormality and difference when you compare right and left. Um, yes, yes. The, the muscles, uh, they okay. are yeah, hypertrophy of the... Uh, mm, I don't use the word hypertrophy. 
या एनहांसिंग लीजन सीन इन द लेफ्ट चेस्ट वॉल मसल्स एक्सैक्टली यस एंड सो व्हाट इट कैन बी इट्स लाइक एनहांसिंग लीजन इन द सो व्हाट कनेक्शन कैन यू मेक ऑफ दिस एंड दिस बावल दे आर रिलेटेड बावल दिस इज अ बायोप्सी प्रूवन केस सो Uh, what uh, uh, you have done the film really well excellent so now you have to tell me how this and this are related like uh, can you think of something i know uh, like it's a difficult case so what possibilities would come to your mind <laughs> if if it's a common pathology or something like any rare syndrome no 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 it's not a syndrome it's something very common oh, but you are seeing an atypical presentation that's the only thing Okay, so coming and uh, uh, not exactly. I can. Okay, no worries. No worries. You did it well, so it's okay. So this soft tissue mass was biopsied, and this is lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. Now, so what is bowel uh, lymphoma? Okay, and what other what other cause could there be? This is lymphoma. Yeah, and lymphoma. So, what other cause could that be in the abdomen? So, uh, it could be like when you give chemotherapy, you know, right? that chemotherapy radiation and all these things they also affect the bowel you know about chemotherapy induced enteritis and colitis right but this was not this is lymphoma this is but i just want you to keep it in your mind because you can be shown an identical case with lymph nodes and you have the bowel like this and it could be that it is radiation enteritis it is chemotherapy these things also but this is lymphoma this is lymphoma this was lymphoma and then this was lymphoma ma'am isn't it the more, more picture uh, like enteritis like uh, lymphoma usually we see uh, like aneurysmal dilatation or uh, yes so you have i told you it is a common it is an atypical presentation of a common condition you have to keep it in mind the patients are not going to follow the textbook uh, dilatation and all that so it's not making a mess here this is the important thing but that was a very good uh, you did it really well it wasn't an easy case and uh, to diagnose it was not very easy also for us also uh, i i want to see, uh, see the uh, coronal views as well Can yeah let's go there okay so uh, Here I can see uh, that is in the axial view. It is a thick walled uh, cut loop. Mm -hmm. It is giving a target like appearance and telescoping. Yes, exactly. So it is an uh, intersection. Yes. It's a case of Very intersection. Good. Mm -hmm. And I want to see any uh, lead point. Mm -hmm. So there is a lead point, and it is on, visible on this image. On the sagittal views, both, all three images. So, what I uh, am trying to tell all of you is, whenever you are presented with bowel, you always have to say, you said intersubception, so always talk about ischemia, perforation. These are two things you need to say at once that you don't see them. Yeah. Okay. And okay. they are not here. Yeah. But now, okay. So, what's the lead point? Okay. Uh, Ma'am, it it is mostly a uh, um, I think it's a lipoma. Uh, I'm mm, seeing it's not the, fat density. There's no fat um, density. Yeah. So it is a duplication cyst. No, I can't. Uh. Okay, that's a good differential duplication cyst, except that it's more elongated, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's it. that's it. Could be one of the differentials. What else? Mm. The fluid density lesion. Um, yeah. Sorry, ma'am. Can you please? Uh, uh, 
guide me. Okay, so this is a young patient. What is the most common cause uh, young patients come to ER with? 19 year old male. It can be diverticulum. Because yes. uh, uh, diverticulum, okay. So diverticulum and or a polyp. Or a polyp, yeah. Yeah, but you have not, and I don't, uh, do you see any other polyps? Like you won't have one polyp in a young patient, right? So other, the, other, the bowel is just collapsed. So there are no other polyps. So polyp is low on the thing, right? Yeah, but yeah, uh, Next, I would like to do the metal uh, scan to confirm this. No, the we don't need metals. I said the diagnosis is here. So, okay, so I'm going to help you out here. So, is it, it's tubular, right? Yeah, ma'am. So, what, what is the most, and what is this? Uh, here. See, see this and see this. So, there was something that was happening here and then it moved here, right? Something happening here, moved here, young patient, male. I want you to tell me the diagnosis. It is a um, ileocolic interception. Yes, it is ileocolic interception. And due to? Yeah. Uh, due to any mucosyl of appendix? Or this no? is mucosyl of the appendix. So this is mucosyl of the appendix. See, see this is the clue here. Yeah. See this very important case. So like I said, you think of the common causes first. So Meckles is rare, but appendix is very common, right? Yes, so and you see the tubular form of it. So yeah, this patient, uh, had a low grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasm. And uh, this was, uh, this is ileocolic. And he had a resection for this, I believe. Let me see, do you have the surgical? Uh, Okay, we we had the post images also, I think. So he has had resection for it. But this is, uh, so what do you want to do for this patient now? You know what it is. I would refer to the surgeon for uh, treatment. Uh, yeah, for urgent for, uh, surgical. For urgent surgical treatment, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, excellent. Very good. Thanks, ma'am. And yes, I'm provided with the X-ray frontal and uh, lateral projection chest. Um, so I can uh, appreciate here um, the air lucency under the right uh, uh, hemidiaphragm. Mm -hmm. um, and um, on uh, a CD scan, uh, Axial images, I can appreciate this. No, 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 no. Just here. So just tell me what you see and okay. tell me what you want to do. I haven't given you the next images yet. Okay. Uh, so on the uh, X-ray chest, uh, I can appreciate the the air lucencies under the both. What is your diagnosis? Pneumoperitoneum. Pneumoperitoneum. What do you want to do next? Mm, I would... Uh, mm, uh, refer uh, this patient uh, or to the um, I will urgently uh, call the surgical team and uh, I will further advise the CD, uh, yes, CD abdomen. That was very appropriate. So I reported this chest radiograph in emerge. They had no idea about the patient. So and then we did a uh, what you call it uh, CT urgently for this patient. So this is the CT. I'm going to scroll for you. If you want me to change windows, you have to say and I will change it for you. Yes, I am looking at it. Um, I am provided with CT uh, abdomen uh, with contrast. Um, and uh, here I can appreciate the air lucencies within the abdomen. Yeah. Um, and the interior, um, predominantly in the interior part. Um, 
you have to do this whenever you are presented with uh, you have to ask to see uh, where the air is so you can see the amount of pneumoperitoneum you can see the bowel within it see mm-hmm. that there's cross yes. pneumoperitoneum yes. now i'm showing you this because i want you to tell me what is the source of this yes i am looking for the source of uh, this uh, pneumoperitoneum uh-huh. uh, so i am looking at the gut loops okay mm. Where do you want to begin looking? I can take take you there. Mm, um, but where, think, where would you look? You are sitting in a clinic, so you see this. I will um, start from the gastroesophageal junction. Okay, so this is the gastroesophageal junction. Mm, yes. So, mm. What are one or two most common causes where you want to make sure that you're not missing something? Um, the most common is the duodenal perforation. Yeah, because of uh, ulcers. So you see ulcers. how clean and that mm-hmm. is. So that mm-hmm. is kind of gone. Now, where else do you want to look? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the next I will uh, look at the uh, ileal loops. Mm, that is a very uh, less, unless there's trauma. This patient didn't have trauma. She just came to the emerge because she was not feeling well. No trauma. If there is a ileocecal uh, tuberculosis or uh, no. something like that. One extremely common cause. This is an old patient, right? Mm, old patient. Okay, then uh, it could be secondary to volvulus. Any volvulus? You can see that there's no bowel obstruction, right? Yes, I can see because I think it has been perforated. So, um, on this image, what are you looking at? The Look at the axial. Mm. So, in these, you have to kind of track, do you see any air locules coming in? Normally, when there's a perforation, it seals. So, when we start to look at those scans, it has sealed. We don't see it, but we can kind of make it out from where it's coming. Because of the tracking air. So where do you see the tracking air in this? Mm, I think it's uh, um, the transverse colon. Okay, so you uh, see these air locules here. So let's follow that yes. down. We still see some. We still mm, see. Yes. Yes. See? And. And yes, I think it's. So now. I have put this image up for you, which has the diagnosis on the coronal. Mm, okay, uh, I think it's a sigmoid. This is uh, descending colon. Descending colon. Mm. Yes, uh, but uh, can I? And can you please more uh, call it? Uh, mm-hmm. So what are these? Uh, these are the uh, small bubble loops. No, this is colon. This is all okay. descending colon. What are these okay. these things? Here? These are the air locules. Okay, these are the air locules, and I think these are diverticular. Perforated. Yes, diverticular. Diverti- okay. Diverticular, right? Okay, okay, ma'am. And you see this segment, which yes. looks like how? Uh, yes, yes, uh, there is a fast trendings uh, along the um, descending colon, mm-hmm. and uh, mm, uh, the air locules are um, seems to be coming mm-hmm. out from the uh, medial part of the uh, descending colon. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe uh, there is some of uh, the uh, diverticular rupture. Yes, exactly. So this is the only cause. The other thing you see here is there is some fecal loading here. And then this is narrowed and enhancing and thick walled. So sometimes it's what we wrote in this is that this is probably because we see diverticular. See this? Yes. 
So yes, we see you. diverticula and the air is kind of cracking here in the left upper quadrant. So we said splenic flexure or descending colon. And we said mm -hmm. likely diverticular, but you cannot rule out tumor in these cases. You always have to say that the possibility of an underlying tumor cannot be excluded. Look at, look at how it is. Look at this versus mm -hmm. let's bring another image and let's look at the rest of the colon. So if you look at the rest of the colon, look at that. Sigmoid. Look at this. So this could be a tumor that has perforated. Okay. And this could be diverticular that has perforated. Old age, very common. So when you have picked up the nemoperitoneum, you need to go immediately and say that you need to look at the, see how clean that is? Nothing there. So we are not thinking of a duodenum cause. So you say, I would be thinking of duodenal ulcer in old patients, you'd be thinking of diverticulitis, or diverticula. You'd be thinking of a perforating neoplasm. Okay. okay, so this is what it is. Very good. Excellent. First thing it says on the card is breast composition, which we said that they are scattered areas of fibroglandular density. Then we come to the masses. When we come to the masses section, we say that there's an irregular because what we what choices do we have? Oval, round, irregular. So this is how you're going to practice. Pull up mammograms, pull up that card use that card to describe and then you will start talking in that terms you know there's a terminology for breast you cannot use any word for breast okay so shape first of all it says, says shape so it, it is this is irregular shape and now where is it so this line is the center so this is the outer breast and this is the inner breast inner or medial outer and lateral and this is upper from here on the mlo we divide it into upper and lower so that is how we generate four quadrants. So this is present in the upper outer quadrant of the breast. Then quadrant. one other thing we say is we divide the breast into three halves like this. So anterior, middle, and then this is posterior. Three lines. If I were to divide it into, I would do this. Yes, this is looking located anterior. in the posterior. Okay. So then I would say that there is an irregular mass in upper outer quadrant of the breast in posterior third. You can see it is near the back. Okay. And then yes, I'm going yes. to say that it has a speculated margins because in the margins you have five choices. So what am I going to pick? You could pick speculated, you could pick microlobulated, it doesn't matter, but you have to pick one thing from there. Then I'm going to say that it is high density. It's high density, right? From the breast parenchyma, it's yes, high yes. density. So I would say high density. You were using radio dense and those, that's really very wrong. So high density. And then calcifications. So it talks about a lot of calcifications, but these calcifications are could be benign. We leave that. In the suspicious morphology, there are one four types of calcifications. These are pleomorphic. You have to recognize these types of calcifications. Go and look at them. It's very important. So these are pleomorphic. Pleomorphic means different shapes and sizes. There's no tram track and tram track word cannot be used for this. So this is this. So, and then what's their distribution? So in the distribution, there are many distributions, but here we are going to say very easily that they're within the mass. Then I showed you this lymph yes, node. You can also see that the calcifications are also within the lymph node. Okay. So this yes, is it. And then after that, I'm going to show you the ultrasound. So now you can talk about the thing here. So what's it here? This is, okay. uh, let's go to the mass. So here. Um, after uh, compiling my findings in the um, first mammogram image, it uh -huh. is most likely uh, Barrett's 4C to me. But okay. uh, then I would like to see the ultrasound it's images. Barrett's 5. There is no doubt that this is not a malignant yes. mass. You can see the lymph nodes. You can see the microcalcifications. They are yes, flip more yes, five. I'm sorry, five. Yes, mass. Yes. five. Yes, okay, so five. just one line. What's this? Ma'am, uh, these are the uh, calcifications uh, scattered and uh, within the uh, ill defined irregular uh, mass, mass which is of uh, uh, taller than wider and uh, with pos uh, no posterior enhancement, although lateral enhancement, uh, lateral acoustic shadowing is noted and uh, increased flow in within the mass. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what's this? Uh, Ma'am, uh, this is the uh, axillary uh, lesion. Uh, yeah, note. 
Yes, ma'am. Lymph node. This is a this is a low line. Cortical thickness looking up to me more than three centi um, three mm. This is a an abnormal lymph node. There's loss of fatty hilum. This is the one with fatty hilum. This is fatty hilum. This is cortical thickness. Here there is nothing. It's just an abnormal yes, lymph node. Round oval morphology mm -hmm. irregular. These are microcalcification. See that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma the mass. Look, you can see within the mass also. Where mm -hmm. is it? You can see within the mass and you can see here. So this is what you're looking at. Okay. So what do you want to do next for this one? Ma'am, next uh, is as a period uh, five, uh, I would like to do the biopsy of the um, lesion and do the histopath correlation. And yes. uh, uh, yes. then ma'am, surgery will be okay advice further. Mm. What's this one? Uh, tram track uh, classifications. In no, there's no tram track again. So it's not the, tram. Uh, right. These are benign Second. secretory classifications. Okay, ma'am. Uh, can we call it as a uh, needle? Like, because the no, no. one you category have, I have to tell according to that. I'm just trying to find. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is just I. This is for benign microcalcifications. And what is the density in this patient, ma'am? Uh, this is of mixed. Uh, I think this falls in that type C. Uh, no, is fatty or B. This is A or B. Oh, ma'am, फिर तो but it's not A, ma'am. B पे में जाएगा B. Perfect. You can put it into B. I don't disagree, but uh, it's not uh, C definitely. Okay. 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 So I lost some of my images. I don't know what happened. Uh, can what can you see now? Can you see a new mammogram? Mm, yes, ma'am. Okay. Are so there. The, oh, you can go on. It's okay. You can tell me about this. Ma'am, CC and AMLO uh, views of the uh, breast and breast is uh, a very um, a glandular type. Uh, it is most likely type D. Mm -hmm. And uh, ma'am, uh, okay. Uh, ma'am, in the um, uh, first, I am looking at the CC uh, images of the uh, breast. Here I can appreciate that there is a thickening of the um, uh, I think right, right breast with the uh, um, uh, mild nipple retraction, and uh, there is a, a high density in the ill defined linear uh, area and just uh, um, uh, adjacent to the nipple and the outer quadrant. But and uh, it's also apparent, apparent on the um, MLO view within the upper so upper outer quadrant and okay, um here because of the shortage just retro yes yeah. ma'am i'm going to stop you because of the shortage of time first of all tell me the density here ma'am and tidy glandular uh, this is c this is type c okay. there's heterogeneous fibroglandular tissue acr type c and then what's happening in this there's something that is and bio uh, symmetric so this is very important to recognize. What is this? Uh, ma'am, ma'am, you know, uh, skin thickening with the uh, uh, thickening. orange deep you, uh, uh, you you should not use that word yet because it is bilateral and symmetric, okay. right? So okay. yeah, so you you are going to say that they are ACR type C and there is skin and trabecular thickening. So you see. There's also like there is increased uh, uh, like more density in both breasts, which appears yes, similar. So ma'am, class classifications we macro ma'am. These are the is uh, uh, kis calcification kis mein kis mein fall karega? Here, uh, just forget those are benign calcifications. Not okay. that, but this is bilateral symmetric skin and trabecular thickening involving both breasts. Okay. This is her follow up mammogram. What happened? Between this and this. Afterwards, she's improved. And now, uh, ma'am, uh, it has been improved and there. And uh, what is the most? Uh, so, what skin thickening was still persists there. This is skin, uh, this is breast edema bilaterally. Okay, Ms. Right? Okay. So, she is a 70 year old female patient. Ma'am, cause what? of the breast edema? 
So what is the cause of bilateral breast edema? Ma'am, it's any CCF or systemic exactly. cause, congestive she cardiac failure, heart failure, liver. She had congestive heart failure. We did her ultrasound. Okay. It was normal, nothing. This is follow-up. Okay. Okay, so don't, uh, if you had seen unilateral on one side, you would be saying uh, suspicious. Okay, so there are three causes for unilateral. Forget this one. See, you're only seeing it on the left breast. So it could be inflammatory breast cancer, then it could be um, lymphoma, and the third cause, it could be radiation. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So these are the three main causes. Bilateral, symmetric, congestive heart failure improved. Okay? So let's... Ma'am, the first, uh, the, um, these are the um, CC and MLO views of the uh, breast, which shows a fibroglandular, um, a fibrophatic uh, glandular pattern of the breast, that is ACR grade B. And um, I, yes. yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The uh, overall, the, the left breast, uh, it appears to be um, smaller, as uh, smaller yeah, as compared to the right breast, mm -hmm. and it shows um, uh, an, um, uh, some uh, some dis um, uh, distortion, architectural distortion. Yes, uh, yes. there is also. Where uh, is it? It is in the region of the axilla. Mm, I want you to say, like I told you before. Uh, okay. and, uh, yes, it is in the um, superior, uh, superior upper. upper Upper, and superior quadrant. Outer. Upper, outer. This is upper quadrant. and outer. So upper and outer. And where is it? Anterior it is in the, posterior. It is in the posterior location. Yes. So upper, outer, posterior third of the breast. You see an architectural distortion. The breast is smaller. What is the most common cause? Because uh, it can be post it it can be post surgical. It is post surgical. It is post surgical. So now let's come to the right breast. Uh, in the right breast, um, uh, I can see an ill-defined uh, increased density that has pigulated margins mm -hmm. in the lower mm -hmm. um, inferior pool or in a uh, lower in uh, inner region lower of inner. the Perfect. breast. Lower inner, and uh, you could call this mid to posterior third because it's kind of a junction. So mid to posterior third, okay. Okay. Excellent. Um, and uh, it has speculated margin and some architectural distortion. However, it has no effect on the, um, no, it is away from the nipple and this, uh, it is not causing any skin thickening. However, I can see some uh, lymph nodes in the right axilla. I uh, would not say much about them. They don't look much. See, okay. the kind of they are the So what, yeah. what is this and what do you want to do for it further? Uh, I would like to do um, further imaging, uh, like this, the, the coned uh, views of these or uh, magnified views. Those are magnified called views. smart compression views. Yes. Now, the thing is that sometimes this is just because of overlapping tissue. Yes. Okay? Like here is then. So this could be that. And we are yes, fooled many times. So you want to do spot compression to see why do you do spot compressions if they persist? If you see micro calcifications, you do magnification views. Yes, if you see uh, something like this, which you are unsure, asymmetry or distortion, then you want to do spot compression. So your spot compression views are here. Yes, ma'am. These are the uh, spot compression views of these uh, of this area in the right press, which shows that the persistence of that speculated Perfect. lesion with so surrounding architectural persists. So then you want to do what? Um, next, I would like to do its ultrasound as well as yeah. so uh, biopsy, here. ultrasound gallic biopsy. So ultrasound is here. Uh, that the sound shows a taller than wider lesion with uh, surrounding irregular margins and surrounding architecture distortion. Mm -hmm. uh, so keeping in view that that left breast uh, um, uh, architecture distortion and post -op uh, as a post-operative case, which may be the uh, breast carcinoma and the other. Uh, my this is um, most probably a um, um, another synchronous lesion in the right breast. Okay, so you you become you became very complicated here. Um, so you have to leave it simple. That one is gone, treated long ago. You okay. can see that it's long standing. There's nothing acute there. So this is another new thing. So just say that you're suspicious that. So what pyrites are you going to put it at? It will be minus five. Excellent. And especially seeing this one, right? Lymph nodes were okay. So that's why I'm saying don't focus on the lymph nodes. There's nothing okay. wrong here. Now I'm going to show you the next one, which I can explain away. 
uh, just to save some time. So then what happened is that this is the patient. So when you're doing partial mastectomy, she has had a partial mastectomy on the left side, right? She, this does not involve the lymph nodes. It is very localized. So then what do you do? You do localization, pre-operative needle localization for them. Uh, while mm -hmm. I'm saying this, if anybody is unclear, just ask me any questions here, okay? Because this case is for your exam. So that's why it is important. So then we did a, an ultrasound guided uh, localization for the thing. And you can see that this is the needle that is coming in. And then here we go. And then we have placed it through it. You can see this. This is the localization at the time of the localization. So now what is this? This says right specimen. So she has had her lumpectomy. And you can see our localization wire. So then what, you, what happens is that after the patient has had a lumpectomy, they send you back that specimen which you localized. And then you do an ultrasound of the specimen and you see this wire going through and you see that mass there. So then you tell them that the mass is in the specimen and the localization wire is there because this is what they want to know. It is present at this 8. You can see that 8 here, 8. And here it's G. So G8 is where the cancer is and that is how the pathologist then begins to examine it. So this is these two are specimens. After localizing it, this was the mammogram. So you can see that this is the mass we saw. See that there? Yes, yes, so we have localized it. So this is a localization. This is the X-ray specimen. This is the ultrasound specimen. These are the spot compression views. And uh, this is when it was done. Uh, does anyone have any questions here? They do show you uh, in exams uh, the specimen. Uh, it may not always look like this because everywhere is different. But you're going to see a specimen like this and you might see a needle going through it. And then you know that the patient has had a partial mastectomy. Okay, so, ma'am, there is a question. Uh, that is there a residual carcinoma in the left breast as this is post op is? Those are post operative changes. Okay.